Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. is often repeated in clothing and women love it. I happen to have a line at HSN, as you know, and um, this is part of my spring collection. Yeah. I've added illusion mesh for sex, sex appeal. Suzanne, I love what you're wearing. Thank you so much. It's Wendy Williams for HSN. Yes. Uh -huh. I like the pockets. I love the pockets, you know I do. Oh, yes, I love the print, I feel very springy. Thank you, I sewed it myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, I'll be at HSN Wednesday at midnight and then all day Thursday, like a 24 hour, there's a thing going on this week, yes. Somebody told me somebody that I love is celebrating their birthday today. Oh. Happy birthday, Suzanne! <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you. Suzanne, in, in light of the fact that I didn't know it was your birthday until this morning, uh -huh. but I do have a gift for you. You do? You can keep your outfit. Oh, thank you. Afterwards, I'm gonna get the key to the Wendy prize closet. Oh my God. And you can go in there and pick out 10 wonderful things. Now you know we have vacuum cleaners, curling irons, moisturizers, all the stuff you already have, but now you can have more. Thank you, thank you. No, we'll, we'll talk later. Thank Happy you. birthday, thank Suzanne. You. Thank you. Um, okay, the Hulk Hogan payday was absolutely, it still baffles my mind. How about you? I don't really understand. I mean, remember Hulk sued the website Gawker for posting a video of him having sex with Hulk's then best friend's wife, Bubba the Love Sponge. Now, first of all, who offers their spouse? <laughs> Confidentially speaking, I've heard this before, but um, so, Bubba offered Hulk, because Hulk was fighting really, really hard with Linda at that time. They were still married, but they were fighting. And Bubba, I guess, just felt bad for Hulk and offered up his wife. <laughs> well, now, here's where the problem started. So Hulk goes over to their house, and they do the nasty in the master bedroom. <laughs> well, now, number one, even if somebody's gonna offer you up their partner, who does the scene of the crime on their terms? <laughs> like Hulk, you were supposed to have arranged some sort of hotel where it was you and she or something like that. You know, you can't trust these people that they call friends because given the right amount of money and dangulation in front of them and depending on their own circumstance, <laughs> why wouldn't you record Hulk Hogan? <laughs> having sex, you know? And Hulk says he didn't know about the tape. I had to do my research, so I actually watched that um, for the first time today. And I have to say, <laughs> it, 
Well. It's a tough job, but someone's gotta do it. Here, here's, here's what I saw, and no disrespect. I saw a middle-aged man, um, you know, who did not know that the camera was there. Otherwise, his performance would have been so, like, you know. <laughs> you know, when the camera's on, you do the most. So the jury awarded Hulk $115 million for invasion of privacy. <laughs> And that money is to be paid uh, to Hulk by Gawker.com. Now, I don't know that Gawker has this money, so Hulk will probably never get it. By the way, Hulk was only suing for 100 million, not only, but 100 million. But the jury and the court found it so distasteful what Bubba and his wife did, allegedly, that they gave him an extra $15 million bonus. Gawker is claiming that the sex tape, um, you know, was news because Hulk talks about his sex life all the time, you know? He, he's talked about it before. Um, this is the jury, um, or the jury rather, says that, you know, people are entitled to privacy, whether it's me, you, or whatnot, um, in their house and in their bedroom. I believe that. I believe that people are entitled. I think that Hulk is entitled to win, but I just think $115 million is, is accessible. Um, uh, in excess, especially when Aaron Andrew, who really was invaded with the privacy. Aaron, Aaron um, was asking for 75. I was telling her through the TV she should go for 100 million, but she landed at, what, 50? 55 million, yeah. But this is a woman in a peephole and, and so on. It's just, it's, it, the story disgusts me. You know what came on this weekend? I was in heaven. What? Two of my favorite movies back to back. What? I forgot what channel I was watching. <laughs> but my guys were out and the dog was outside, so it was just me. <laughs> Get Rich or Die Trying, yeah. follow, followed by Eight Mile. Oh. I know, I know. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> So, Iggy Azalea. Oh. I know, I forgot all about her. I, I forgot all about her. <laughs> A apparently. <laughs> I like her outfit. Anyway, but I forgot all about Iggy. Apparently, she's still talking, she's still with us. <laughs> she revealed, and this is your fault, um, you all, not Iggy, but you. This is your fault. Yup, and yours too. <laughs> not mine. Um, anyway, Iggy revealed that she had a psychotic breakdown last year and she even contemplated suicide because of the internet trolling and people saying horrible things about her and stuff. And I don't feel like we say anything so bad here at the show, I'm just here to report the news. <laughs> And I've also always said that I don't think that, um, I don't think that, uh, you know, Iggy is a bad looking woman. You know, a lot of people have things to say about her looks. A lot of people have things to say about her, you know, alleged all the enhancements and stuff like that. People are mad at her because she's a white girl from, you know, a foreign country playing in what's typically a you know, black or person of color game, which is rap. I think people are jealous. I'm pretty consistent with that opinion, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, because I don't like to hear when people have psychotic breakdowns and you know all that stuff, see? So I, I didn't do it, you did it. <laughs> well, take a look at what she said. There were times when I just wanted to quit life, the whole thing, really. Like sometimes I would drive through the canyons to get to my horses and I'd be like, what if I just kept driving off the canyon? People made it seem, and it's like people in the industry that I work with too, like, oh, this is it for your career now. So wow. what are you gonna do? And you know, like I live in this country on a work visa. So if I don't have a job, that means that I go home and my whole life is here. So that's like a lot for somebody to deal with. Now, don't you feel bad? All right, well, now look. Number one, I don't think that she's built for this particular industry. It's a really, t like if you listen to what people say online, you'd be um, contemplating as well. Only part that I didn't like that she said, because all of a sudden I said, ah, poor rich girl. 
I drive through the canyon to see my horses. She should, <laughs> she should have, she should have left the horse thing out, you know. But Iggy, my thought is, is that see how fast we forgot about you already. Well, you need to focus on your comeback. In the meantime, I guess that's what she's doing because she's postponed her wedding to that NBA star Nick Young to work on her music and her touring. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now hold on now. I say she should go with him to the Justice of the Peace immediately. <laughs> then get back in the studio to focus on her tour and, and her music. Then, once she's got both feet on the ground with that, have a party with confetti. You can borrow our confetti cannon, we own it. <laughs> I can send it to you. Yeah. My thought is long engagements. Look, he might wiggle off the hook. Or, or she might wiggle off the hook. No long engagement. So let's talk about Rihanna. Yeah. Have you seen her on the cover of the new Vogue magazine? Oh my gosh. Right? So she looks really terrific and inside the magazine she addresses a lot of stuff including uh, the rumors of she and Beyonce not getting along, feuding. Um, basically what she says is that the media wants rivalries and um, she claims that there isn't one. Now see, I don't believe that. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you who I think rivals more with, with, I think that Beyonce rivals more in her mind and her plotations than Rihanna. <gasps> Rihanna, all right, let, let me just explain what I mean. Cause after I told it in our morning meeting, they totally got what I was saying. They're like, you're right. Well, Beyonce's the older one. Not that old is old, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Beyonce's the older one. She's also the one at this particular time, and there's nothing wrong with having kids, but Beyonce's saddled with, you know, a child, saddled with a husband, saddled with such a controlled career that she could never do half the things that Rihanna has done. And I'm sure that Beyonce loved touring the world with Kelly and, um, I didn't, I didn't mean that. <laughs> but you know, I'm sure she enjo uh, en enjoyed touring, uh, but those girls didn't seem like they had the kind of fun that Rihanna's having. And even when Beyonce became a solo artist, everything was still so controlled. My thought about Rihanna, no, I wouldn't want to have a daughter like that because I would never get a night's sleep. <laughs> and and um, I could not live like that as a younger person. But I really do enjoy that she's having fun with her money. I don't think she gives, I don't think she's in competition with anybody in her mind, which I love. She just seems very chill, like, like okay, Beyonce or Jennifer Lopez or whoever it is, but I am Rihanna and I'm gonna do what I want. In the magazine, she's always on vacation in a yacht, <laughs> right? I mean, she drinks in front of us, you know, in the pictures. She smokes bud in front of us. <laughs> she has intimate relationships with whoever the hell she wants. <laughs> and I feel like she's that free spirit that a lot of people really enjoy looking at. So no, uh, Rihanna, I don't think that you're feuding with Beyonce, but I do believe that Beyonce is some sort of <laughs> feud in a weird kind of way that goes back in the day. Anyway, and so, and so this is what Rihanna says, her only one regret in life, one regret. <laughs> she says in the Vogue magazine that she's not wearing a bedazzled thong with this dress. <laughs> Funny. The following story, <laughs> I don't wanna tell you. However, I must. <laughs> okay. It's about Madonna. Well, I think she's really becoming unhinged. Now you heard this story about that 17 year old fan that she invited on stage and then ripped the girls top down, Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl style, and exposed her boob. 
All right, well, that's what I'm here to tell you. Take a look. She's the kind of girl you just wanna slap on the ass and pull. Oh, <laughs> I didn't stop, sorry, sexual harassment. Okay, the reason that I didn't wanna do the story is because, uh, thank you Daily Mail, by the way, for that footage, we love you. But look, the reason that I didn't wanna do the story is because as soon as I heard it over the weekend, I was like, okay. First of all, Madonna has already talked to this girl. She already, th in other words, it's a planned stunt. Because there is no 17-year-old girl, and I don't, is that underage wherever she was? She was in Australia? Uh -huh, is yeah, that underage? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, Madonna might be a lot of cuckoo. But she's not gonna pull a 17-year-old underage girl on stage like that. Charges can only be pressed if the girl is willing to press charges. So you figure she might have written this girl a, a cute check <laughs> and invited the girl to a party with her dancers afterwards. But this to me is just contrived and Madonna is just looking for us to talk about her. They insisted. So I said, okay, let me do this stupid story. <laughs> Look. Clap if you think that this is absolutely planned. Yeah. So, the girl is not pressing charges. She said it was the best moment of her life. I'll tell you, I'll tell you um, the problem here. The problem is that Madonna will never get back in the good graces of, of her son, who's 15, if she continues this behavior. Ever, ever. Right? Um, and so now, the, uh, at first, um, the custody over Rocco was between London and New York, and Guy, her ex-husband, had the custody. But M Madonna wants her back over here. But as of this morning, um, London bowed out, like, nope, let this be a New York thing. So Madonna's tour has officially ended, so now she'll have more time to try to get Rocco back while still keeping an eye on her other three children. You see what I'm saying? Let's move along. Uh, uh, um. So you know I'm not a sports person. But I like to talk sports when sports meets the intersection of Right. And that's the case of Adam LaRoche. That, base, that baseball player with the woolly red beard who's just given up $13 million because he's a family man. Oh. oh my gosh. You guys were slow on the clap though. Well, you know what? Okay, so he has, first of all, he's worth, they say $30 million and he's got a check with the White Sox. Do we still call them the White Sox? Yeah. Uh -huh. Are the Red Sox still around? No, no. Boston, Boston. This, is Chicago. this is Chicago. Oh, Boston, right, 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 right. <laughs> Look, uh, so he's with the White Sox, and um, he's got a $25 million contract. He had 13 million left. And he has 13 uh -huh. million left, and he told them, take the 13 million and shove it. The Sox asked him not to bring his 14-year-old son to work every day, so he decided to retire. Now, the son, there is a Mrs. LaRoche. It's a full family. They got a daughter. They got the 14-year-old son. Um, this guy's father, um, LaRoche, played professional baseball also, and he always used to spend a lot of time, you know, at the Diamond and in the clubhouse with, with his own father. But my thought is, I wonder how Mrs. Roche feels about all this. <laughs> it must be nice though to, you know, to thumb your nose at money like that. I guess he saves his money, so his money's up. But I gotta tell you something, I would complain also. Nobody wants to be, not all the time. Like, first of all, that take your kid to work thing, that happens once a year. Yeah. Like, I don't much like kids that much, even though I'm a mom and they try to brainwash you. Suzanne, you're the same way. We talk about this all the time. I get it. I don't, I don't really like kids. But I know. Right. I like my kids. Yeah, right. And that's it. How many people understand are the same way? Don't, don't be guilty. Oh, really? Just me and her? Yeah, just us. Clap if even though you have kids, you don't necessarily like kids. And if you're pregnant right now and wondering how to act around other people's kids, it's fine if you tell them, get out of the way. <laughs> because, you, you know, anyway, it's a little guilt trip they play on moms. You're supposed to like all kids. No, what? <laughs> now look, 
if I'm in the locker room and I'm a ball player and I wanna talk and I wanna tell, you know, private part jokes, uh -huh. I gotta shut my mouth because there's a 14 year old there. Even if, even if his dad is like, fine, you can still curse around my son. I'm not talking like that. Around. And the boy is there every day. The Sox gave him a uniform. The Sox gave him a locker right next to his father's. The boy is there every day. The boy gets homeschooled there at the stadium. It's just all too much. So, and this needs to be an open discussion for all the sports teams and all the places where we all work. Now let's rethink this every, you know, when a kid comes to work with you thing. Cause a lot of us as adults, we don't have time. We don't have time for that. <laughs> Sometimes you make it so difficult me, for, for me to tell a story and not seem, you know, mean or something that I, I suck in so much air, I feel dizzy now. <laughs> Look, do you ever watch my after show? Clap if you have. You do? Okay. I've been doing it for years. It's only the fastest thing growing over um, at the YouTube. Uh, you know, <laughs> after, after I finish this, this show and I leave the floor, there's a whole nother show that I do. And it's not very long, but what it does show is a whole cast of characters. You know, first of all, me at, acting out of character. Oh yeah, there's more. <laughs> um, a, acting out of character, you can see um, some of my, um, crew and my staff and all kinds of shenanigans go on. So I just wanted to introduce you if you've never seen it. Here's a clip from last week. Let me set it up for you, okay? First of all, my name is Wendy from Peter Pan. And my, my grandmother, who the last thing that she did before she passed away of colon cancer, this is my mom's mom, is I was born and she said her name will be Wendy. As a source of, I know, as a source of, um, oh, don't you do that as a source of happy, you know what I mean? I see life on the sunnier side. I mean, don't mistake my smile for a get over, but I am particularly sunny. And this show has been around for seven years and I will defend to the end that I haven't changed in the way that Suzanne's husband, Brendan, is oh. waiting for me to change. You know he's waiting for me. But you, do you know that? Yes, oh, I watched, I, I know. Your husband has been sitting since season one waiting for me to become yes. like some sort of big shot. Yeah. You know, don't ride yeah. my elevator, don't yep. look me in the eyes. Yep. Like, I am still the same Wendy. Yes. All I did was ask for an intercom to be put in my office. <laughs> just so, no, just so I could sit at my desk, uh -huh. you know, and, and talk to the crew. Uh -huh. What if I've fallen and I can't get up? <laughs> or something. <laughs> so, all right. So there's the setup, and this is only a 30 second clip, but you'll get the gist. Go ahead. So when you talk about me, <laughs> and I don't talk about you. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, I don't. I love you to death. No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> no, you, no, you don't. Stop it. I'm leaving. I love you. Oh, I'm going to feel horrible now. It's St. Patrick's Day. So, so go to the bar with the fellas. And now I'm going to cry when I start drinking. One, <laughs> one drinking. Don't forget I'm all about you. this. I'm telling you, Suzanne's ready to cry to me. Why is everybody crying? Wait, stop. I'm sorry. I do adore it's you. You know that. Nice. I'm on your team. I'm sorry. It's a beautiful story, like, hello. Um, you can uh, catch the after show every day, everyone. Go to wendyshow.com. You can hit the YouTube icon or just go right to YouTube. Join in the after show family.